Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video, we'll be learning about Jenkins. We'll see what is Jenkins and we'll understand how it's working behind the scenes. We'll also be looking at how we can automate and build an Angular based application and we'll be doing this through a freestyle as well as a pipeline based process. So with that out of the way, let's get this started. All right, so first things first, what is Jenkins? So in layman terms, Jenkins is a build tool that you can use to build, test and deploy your applications onto service. So for example, if you have an Angular based application, there are multiple steps that you have to follow in order for you to build the actual project, then copy that image somewhere in a server and host it through that particular server. And if you have to do multiple iterations of this build process and moving those files and getting it ready for hosting, this whole process takes a lot of steps. That is where Jenkins comes into the picture and it automates the process of actually building the application, then testing through some test cases and then deploying that onto servers. This could be Docker based servers or Kubernetes or anything which is handling these kinds of tasks. So Jenkins is not just used for building and deploying applications. You can use it to automate a lot of other tasks as well. So let's say you want to execute some bash scripts on your server from time to time. You can do that through Jenkins as well. There are multiple use cases of Jenkins, but the most widely used case is actually building an application and deploying that to servers or pushing your code onto repositories online from which some other manager could take that and host that into a server. So in this particular video, we'll be taking an Angular application and we'll be building that through integration of Docker as well as Jenkins. And after that has been built, we'll be pushing that image that was created in Jenkins through Docker to a Docker Hub repository. Now we'll be doing this in two ways. The first way is the freestyle way, wherein you'll be provided with a few checkboxes that you have to check or uncheck based on your requirements. And then you have to give the shell commands that you can use to execute and build the application. The second way is the pipeline approach, wherein you can actually specify the steps that have to be followed one after the other. And all of these steps include something like building the actual application and testing that, and then deploying that by pushing it to a remote repository. So with this, we are done with the theory. Now let's actually jump into Jenkins and see how this actually works. So before going to the Jenkins website, I've created a repository in GitHub, which outlines the things that we're gonna follow in this particular course. So the first thing that you have to understand and learn is how to use Docker. So if you have no idea what Docker is and how it works, then I'm gonna link the Docker crash course in the I button at the top. You can go through that and understand what Docker is. Once you're done with that, you can come back from here because you'll be using Docker a lot in this particular video and knowing the basics of Docker is going to be helpful in this particular video. And throughout this video, if you want to get the snippets that we are going to use, then you can directly go to the repository and all the commands are listed out here and you can go through that. Also listed out the pipeline script that you're going to use in this particular video as well, but we'll come to that later. All right, so now first let's open our terminal and let's install Jenkins. So what we'll be doing is that we'll be installing Jenkins inside of our Docker container. So I'm running a Windows based system and I've installed Docker through the Docker desktop. So that is currently running right now. So now what I'll do is I'll go to the folder where we're gonna write and I'll open this through VS Code. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a new terminal instance and I'll just copy over the project that we have here. I'll copy the HTTPS here and let's git clone this. So this is the Docker file that we're gonna to use to actually create the Docker image of Jenkins. So you don't need to understand what's actually happening here, but the main gist of it is that it's gonna take the Jenkins Docker container, which has JDK 17, and it's gonna use that and create a custom image of Jenkins, which can be installed into Docker. So this particular snippet of code has been taken from the actual documentation of installation of Jenkins through Docker. So if you have doubts on that, what you can do is that you can open your browser and just go to Jenkins. And inside Jenkins, just go to documentation and installation Jenkins, and I'll go to Docker. In here, if you scroll down to Windows section of it, you'll see these are the steps that are outlined here. What I'm doing is I'm just using this as my base and I'm installing that. So that's what's here. Okay, so I provided the same thing in the GitHub repository as well. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just copy over the command that we have here, that is build docker. So I'll paste it here and I'll click on enter. That's gonna take a few seconds and it's gonna build the docker image. So what I'll do is I'll just type in docker image. You'll see that this particular image has been created. 
Now what we have to do is that we have to actually run the Docker container through that image. There are a few things that you have to understand here, but first let's copy the actual command and let's paste that here. All right, so now let's understand what's happening here. We are running this particular Docker image on port 8080 and we're also exposing another port that is 50,000, uh, which is gonna be used by Docker internally. So I'm just gonna run that in detached mode and I'm gonna give a name to it called as Jenkins-Docker. Apart from this, there are two main things that's happening here. One is I'm connecting my local Docker to the Docker inside of Jenkins. So what's happening here is I'm not installing Docker inside of my Jenkins container. Instead, I'll be using my local systems Docker daemon inside of Docker. I'm establishing a link between the container and my local Docker. Okay, so what happens is I can execute Docker commands inside of the Jenkins container as well. And this particular, you know, snippet is gonna help me do that. Apart from that, I'm also linking the Jenkins home volume to the actual Jenkins home volume inside of a Jenkins container. So basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna persist the data whenever we start or stop the Jenkins container. So basically what it means in simple terms is if I just stop the Jenkins container, whatever pipelines or you know freestyle projects that I've created will not just vanish away. They will be persisted because that is there inside my local system. Okay, there's an image present in my local system. So that's the main gist of it. And I'm just running the particular image. So I'll just click on enter and that should have created the Jenkins image. So now what I'll do is I'll open my browser and I'll go to localhost 8080. So Jenkins is gonna run on localhost 8080. That is its default port. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is you have to type in the administrator password and this particular password is present inside this particular location in the actual container. So if you want to get this password, you can execute the bash command and log into the server that is Jenkins container and go to this particular location and get the password. But since we are installing Jenkins for the first time, this password is also printed in the logs. So what I'll do is I'll just type in docker logs, then the name of the container that we had created. So it's Jenkins Docker. All right, so now as you can see in the logs, there is one particular password that is printed out, right? That is the master password, okay? That is the administrator password. I just copy that password. I'll go back to the browser and I type it in here. So now it's gonna give you an option wherein you can install all these suggested plugins or select your specific plugins as well. Unless and until you know specific packages or plugins that you want to install, 99% of the time we select the install suggested plugins part. So I'll just click that and it's gonna start installing all the necessary plugins that are generally used by most of Jenkins users. So these are all the top plugins that are there in that. Okay, so once that is done, it's gonna ask you to create your admin user. So I'll just type in. And then let's click on save and continue. Let's leave that as it is and let's finish that. Okay, that's it. Now you're logged into Jenkins and this Jenkins is running on a Docker container. All right, so now let's understand the UI here. So there's the main page that you landed. So this is the stock kind of version of Jenkins. There is another UI that is there, which is more modern looking. We'll get into that at the end of the video because most people might be familiar with this. So on the left hand side, you have your main menu wherein you can create a new item. It's gonna give you options of creating a freestyle project or pipeline or multiple types of options are available here. Let's go back and there are people, which is going to be your access management. There is build history. Then you also have manage Jenkins, which is going to house all your actions or settings that you can configure. Let's quickly glance over all the settings here as well. The first one is the system configuration, wherein you're going to spend most of your time. So these are the global settings and parts of the system. You'll be mostly spending your time on tools and plugins, wherein you can install multiple plugins, where you can enable, disable or delete them. And inside the tools, you have the configurations that you can link to. Like let's say you've installed JDK inside of your container, then you can link to that or Maven installations and all those things, okay? And whenever you install a new plugin, if it has configuration that needs to be done, that's gonna be present inside of tools as well. The next thing is nodes and clouds. These are kind of an advanced, you know, topics wherein you can actually create multiple agents inside of Docker and assign the particular agent to a particular project, meaning, 
like let's say I have a pipeline and inside my pipeline I have a let's say Java based project. Now I can build my Java application inside of my Jenkins master that is my main Jenkins container or I can use a separate container for these kinds of build jobs that is called a node and node is an older approach right now people are using clouds so wherein you can configure a docker cloud or a kubernetes cloud or an aws cloud and you can configure that and you can build your application inside of the cloud and you can use jenkins to trigger that so instead of building your applications inside of your jenkins master server you can offload that into a particular server so that there is no you know load onto the actual master server so that it doesn't get timed out apart from that you also have security credentials and credential providers these are the system you know security configurations we'll just go into credentials at one point of this video but not right now apart from that you have your system information logs and statistics and some other information like you know uh, reloading the configuration from disk or you know uh, preparing for shutdown so basically if you do this uh, jenkins is going to wait till all the jobs which are running are done then it's going to shut down the jenkins server okay all right so now let's go to the top and let's actually create a new project so as I like the freestyle project and it's going to ask us to enter a name. So I'll just type in angular app freestyle. That's going to be the name of the project and let's click on OK. OK, so there are a few things that are listed out here. Let's try to go, go through that as quickly as possible. So here you can get the description of your project. Then you can give an option where you can discard your old builds. So if you want to discard your old builds, you can set it up here. I'll not do that. You can link your github project as well and all those other things which are there for you but i'll not do that i'll just go to my source code management in here i'll be linking my git so i'll just open the docker crash course that is the project that we're going to build in this particular video i'll paste the url here and it's a public repository so i don't need to give any credentials and it's going to be there inside the main branch so if you go to the project here we're on the main branch currently right i'll just give that here and after that you also have the build triggers Meaning that you can, you know, trigger your build uh, if you want to do that remotely or through, you know, linking it to GitHub as well. Meaning that there's first option that is, you know, triggering builds remotely. You can do that through, you know, your other projects or scripts and not go into that. Or you can link this to other project wherein, let's say, once your first freestyle project is completed, you can run this particular freestyle project. So it's like chaining one after the other. That's similar to a pipeline and this is an older approach of doing, you know, this thing. Or you can build it periodically, meaning that every five minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour, you can build your project. I'll not do that. Apart from that, you can also trigger uh, it through a Git webhook as well, meaning that let's say you have your source code in your GitHub repository. And whenever there is an update on your dev branch, automatically you can trigger Jenkins and build your project and create the image. That is one way or you can pull it through your source code directly. So you can write your, you know, triggers inside your source code as well. And from that, you can do this as well, but we'll not do any of these. Instead, we'll be doing just a manual click and start the build process. Apart from that, you also have, you know, environment specific things like deleting the workspace before build starts. I'll check that. Apart from that, you have a few things here. You can go through these and just look at what these mean. For now, we don't need to bother with these. We'll not be using these functions. So apart from all of these, we'll have to focus mainly on the build steps. So here, what I'll do is I'll just add the execute shell, which is basically telling Jenkins to run a shell command. So in this case, I want to run a shell command saying to build my Docker image. So I'll just go back to the repository. Here, I'll just copy this particular shell command. I'll paste that here. So this is going to basically build your image. But in order for you to build this image, you need to have access to NPM. So this is an Angular project, right? In order for that Docker image to be built, you have to have Node. So what I'm going to do is I'll install a plugin to give access of Node to this particular project. So first, let's apply this and let's save that. So these are the things that are available once you have created an actual project. So before going to that, let's go back to the dashboard and let's click on Manage Jenkins. Let's go to plugins and install plugins, not install available plugins. In here, let's type in npm and let's install the Node.js version for it. Let's click on install and that should install my Node.js. Now, once that is done, let's go back to dashboard and let's go back to the project once again. 
now let's click on configure configure is your you know setting the things up and all so let's go back here and okay now as you can see inside the build environment there is a new option available called provide node and npm bin or folder to path so basically that's gonna you know give your node.js installation to your docker image build process as of now there is no installation present so what i'll do is i'll open the dashboard in a new tab let's go to jenkins manage jenkins and let's click on tools if you scroll to the bottom here you'll see there is a new option called node.js installations in here i'll be using uh, you know new node so i'll just give it a name called node 16 and in the version i'll select my node version 16.2.0 and yeah that's all so basically what i'm doing is i'm creating a configuration called node 16 which i can use inside my freestyle project so i'll apply and save now let's go back and let's click on refresh here let's click on provide and you can see that now node 16 is listed out in this options so this is going to use your node 16 default location of where it is being installed so i'll keep that as it is and i'll now click on apply and save there are post build actions as well but we don't have any post build actions actually to do all right so let's try to understand this menu but before that let's click on build now so if i now click on build now a new you know job is created here and that is there inside the build history let's open this let's click on the three dots to open the actual console so whenever i click on that it's going to open the actual console or if i go back and click on one you'll see that it's going to first open the status page where it's going to show the status of what's happening and the changes page wherein like it's going to compare the old build and the new build and then you have the build output that is the console output okay so in here it's going to show the actual logs from the jenkins container which is running this build process okay you also have build data and all for now let's just focus mainly on console output so now let's wait for this to finish all right, so with that, the build was success. So let's go back to this particular menu. You can see that the build was success. You can go back to the console output or you can go to status and check what's happened here. Similar configuration is present here as well. You also have changes. As of now, there is only one build, but if you had multiple builds, it's gonna show the changes between those builds. Apart from that, you also have workspace, which is gonna you know show the actual list of your Jenkins underscore home. So this is basically my freestyle project repository. This is the folder structure that we have inside of my Docker crash course repository as well. These are the files present inside of that. You can click on configure to edit the configuration that was initially used. And if you want, you can use a post build action like sending an email notification or doing something else that you want, you know, inform you that your build was success or failed. So these are things that you can configure. And this is like the basic version of your Jenkins automation where you can use this freestyle to automate few things. This is practically not good for your larger builds because let's say you have a project wherein you have to build something and you have to run other configurations like testing it out using, you know, unit test cases or something like that. Then actually using that image to, you know, push it to some other location. All those things cannot be done through a freestyle project. That is where you actually use a pipeline based project. So let's apply and save that. Let's go back to the dashboard. Now what I'll do is I'll create a new particular project and this time I'll select pipeline. So I'll type in angular app hyphen pipeline. I'll click on OK. And now the menu here is a bit more wider and you have some other options that you can use. Similar things are also there like giving a description, discarding old bits and all those things. So yeah, you can go through that if you want. But for this particular thing, we'll not bother with any of these. The build triggers are similar, but you, as you can see, there is no NVM, you know, available here. There is a node is not available here, but you still have to execute that particular Angular project only, right? So in order for this to work, what we have to do is that we have to install node directly into the container wherein we have Jenkins hosted. So Jenkins is not going to take care of, you know, installing node into our uh, server or directly into the location where it can use it for the pipeline because we don't have that option anymore because that plugin is not there in the pipeline part. So what we will be doing is that we'll be using NVM, which is a node version manager to directly install node into the server itself. So if you go back to the 
a repository that is the Jenkins crash course. You can see that there is a section called install node.js. So we'll just follow the steps that I have outlined here and we'll be able to install NVM pretty easily. So for that, what I'll do is I'll just copy the first command. Then I'll go back to my terminal instance. And in here, I'll just type in docker ps. As you can see, the name of the container is Jenkins hyphen docker, right? So now what I'll do is I'll execute a command wherein I can log in directly into the Docker container. So if you have seen the Docker crash course, you might have already known about this command. If not, I'll link the Docker repository as well as the crash course in the video description down below. You can go there and you can see the video if you have no idea on Docker or you can go to the repository and you can just find the commands there as well. So I'll just type in Docker exec space hyphen id then i'll type in the container name then i'll type in slash bin slash bash then let's click on enter now i've successfully logged in to the container so now what i'll do is i'll type in the command that we've just previously copied and i'll click on enter so that's going to download the nvm into our system and it's saying that we have to add this to the bash profile so that we can use nvm so for that we'll execute this command let's copy that let's paste it here let's click on enter so that's going to add the nvm related things into the bash profile and it's going to refresh that so now that that's done what we can do is that we can install the version of node that we specifically want so for this particular video we specifically want the node 16 version because that project that i have built uh, in angular is dependent on node 16. so we are going to use that only so that it doesn't break the project all right so let's install 16. So it's going to be nvm space install space 16. if you have a specific version you can install that as well So this has installed node version 16.20.2 and it has set as default. So whenever I do something like node space hyphen hyphen version, that's going to give me the version of node that is currently installed in our container. Or sometimes if you have, you know, multiple versions of node installed, what you can do is that you can just type in the name, use 16. That's going to use the 16, you know, variation of the 16 version of node. Okay. So with that, we are done with installing. So now let's jump back to Jenkins and see how we can continue forward. So there are two ways of creating a pipeline. Let's first understand the pipeline script version. So basically pipeline script is a section wherein you can type declarative styled commands. So what I mean by that is this pipeline is actually using Groovy syntax. So you can just type in the commands that you want to do inside of a Groovy syntax. But majority of the people might not know about Groovy syntax, right? So that is where declarative pipeline comes into picture so basically declarative pipeline is a simpler way of defining the steps that you want to do so for understanding how this is written let's try a sample pipeline let's click on hello world so this is like the basic pipeline that you can write so at the top you have the pipeline name and then you have the agent as i mentioned agents is a advanced topic so we'll not delve into that so i'll just keep the agent as any so it's going to run that on any available agent okay then you have the stages section this is the main core of your declarative syntax of the pipeline so in here i can define a particular stage and i can give a name to it okay and inside that i can give the steps that needs to be followed inside of this so in this case it's just going to print hello world so let's just apply that and save and let's build the project and see what's happening okay as soon as i click on build now inside the build history the project has started and apart from that you can see in the stage view it's gonna show hello and it's gonna say whether that was successful or not you can check the logs from here and it's gonna say hello world let's also go back to the console and here as well you can see hello world has been printed and your job was successful so that is your you know pipeline syntax that is being followed let's go back let's change that so i'll just remove that from here let's say i want to do a github dot you know github plus a maven project so i can use these commands which are already given for me to build a maven based project as well or i can click on scripted pipeline and do some other things as well but for this particular project we'll be doing a node based you know pipeline so that's going to be used to build your angular application so now what i'll do is i'll just remove everything from here github and open our jenkins file so in here as you can see these are the steps that i have followed so let's try to understand what's happening here 
so at the higher level pipeline and agent any are common now apart from that i've defined an environment section okay this is going to house my github credentials my image name and image tag so we'll go into this in the later stages but for now let's understand the stages part so inside stages i have three main stages that i've defined the first one is checkout which is going to check out to my github project url second one is build docker wherein it's going to actually build my docker image for the github you know project then it's going to push the artifacts meaning that it's going to push the image that we've created to docker hub okay so we're going to connect to docker hub and you're going to push your image to that so before going to all of these let's first just create the checkout phase okay so i'll copy this from here i'll go to my pipeline i'll paste everything i'll remove all the steps apart from this particular first stage let's also remove the environment because that is not required here and let's click on apply and save now let's click on build now and see what's happening in the logs let's click on this and as you can see it has successfully connected to my github repository and it was able to pull my code so now what i'll do is i'll go to the second stage so that is your building of docker image so let's copy that here let's go back uh, to this let's click on configure scroll down and let's add the new stage now let's try to understand what's happening here so inside the build docker stage what i'm doing is i'm echoing out the build docker image command and then i'm going to do build docker and creating a new image and here i'm defining my image name and image tag dynamically so i'm not hard coding that here i'm just putting variables at the top and using those here so let's go back and copy those variables as well these are environment specific variables that i used inside of this particular project in this case i'm going to give my okay let's not go to credentials but let's understand name and tag so the image is going to be packet code official slash angular hyphen app and the image tag is going to be the build number so basically this build underscore number is provided by jenkins so whenever you build inside of jenkins automatically that build or that job is assigned a number and that number is something that you can see here so let's refresh here go to the dashboard and let's go to pipeline so there's a hashtag one and hashtag two right these are the build-in numbers so whenever a new build or job is done that build number is available for you to consume so i'll place that instead of a variable called docker image tag and i'll use both of these to create my docker image okay let's not worry about the credentials for now but let's try to apply this and see what's happening so i'll click on build now okay something failed let's go back and see okay undefined build syntax i guess my syntax is a bit wrong let's go and see where i've kept it okay let's go back to here let's go to configure okay so i've kept my stage outside of my stages bracket so i'll place it inside of the stages so let's yeah now that's indented correctly let's apply that save it and now let's click on build okay so the build process has started checkout phase was successful and now it is in the build docker phase so let's see what's happening here okay so now it was able to actually do the particular commands that we've given instead of docker now it is running the npm install so that's going to take a bit of time so let's wait for that to complete okay so now the build is successful let's go back to the pipeline you can see that it was successful as well all right so now what i'll do is i'll open my terminal once again and in here i'll just type in docker images okay now as you can see we have a new image that was created called packet code official slash angular hyphen app now that has been tagged with a build number that is four so basically this is the image that was created from our jenkins pipeline this particular image is housing the actual code of the docker crash course repository so now what i'll do is i'll now go to the next step so let's go back and let's see so the last stage is going to be pushing the artifacts so let's copy that here let's paste that inside of the pipeline once again 
Okay, now let's understand what's happening. Inside the push artifacts, what I'm doing is the first step, I'm linking to my Docker Hub. So before understanding what's happening here, let's first now open Docker Hub and create an account if you don't have one. Okay, so let's open Docker Hub. And I already have an account, so I'll just log into my existing account. Now let's go to the repository section inside my Docker Hub and I'll click on create repository. In here, I'll just give a name to it. Most probably it should be the name of, you know, the image that you have built. So in our case, the image name was angular hyphen app. So I'll just put the same thing here, angular hyphen app. I'll keep it public and I'll click on create that has created my repository. And this is the command that I have to use to push to my uh, repository. So what I'll do is before pushing it, I have to first link my Docker hub with my Jenkins Docker container. So I'll click on this. I'll go to my profile. Um, okay, not my profile. I have to go to my account. Okay, in here, let's go to security. And now what I'll do is I'll create my access token. So using this access token, I can link my container to my Docker hub. So I'll just name it as, let's say, Jenkins Docker, something like that. I'll give read and write and not give delete permissions and I'll click on generate. We have to copy this because this is going to be needed. And as it suggests here, you have to do this. You have to type in docker login hyphen new space your username. So let's go back to our pipeline once again. Before doing this, what I'll do is I'll go to my dashboard. Okay. So we have the password here, right? So basically this is the access token. What I'll do is I'll go to my dashboard and I'll go to manage Jenkins and let's go to credentials. This is where we'll be creating a credential which we can access inside of my pipeline. So I'll click on system. I'll click on global credentials and I'll click on creating a new credential. So I'll select a secret text. So basically our personal access token is a single line of text, right? So I'll keep that as global and I'll type the text here. I'll give an ID to it. I'll give it as such a Docker Hub token. And I'll leave the description empty and I'll click on create. Now that is going to be created here, right? So this is the ID that was given to this particular credentials. If I now go to the pipeline, you'll see that at the top, I've given something called Docker Hub credentials, which is outlining Docker Hub token. That is the ID that we have used previously. Okay. So now if I go down, you'll see that at the stage, there is something called with credentials. Basically, this is the syntax of Groovy, wherein I can give a credential ID, which is the one that we have specified here. And I'll use that credential ID to copy the text over. That is the secret text. And I can link that to a variable. Okay, I can give it as, let's say, variable. This is not the token ID that was created previously. Okay, this is the variable. So I'm linking my secret text to a variable, which I can use inside of my script. So previously we've seen that it's saying docker login hyphen new packet for official, right? So I'll just copy that here and I'll replace it with this. So docker login hyphen new packet for official and the password is going to be my access token. Okay. With this, I'll be linking or establishing a connection with my docker hub. Once that has been done, what I'll do is I'll push my docker image. So I'll type in docker push, give space, then image name, colon, variable. Okay. So this is the same as what we have used here. Okay. This is not what is used here. This image tag. Yeah, that's my bad. So I'll be pushing the image name and the image tag. Okay. This is what is being pushed. Okay. So before going forward, let's try to understand how I got to this. There are a few situations where you have to type in something, but you don't know the groovy syntax, you know, declarative variation of it. So in that case, you can type in, you can just click on pipeline syntax. That's going to open a new tab here where you can, you know, select what you want to do. In this case, let's say I want to connect to a Git repository. I can just give the Git URL. Okay. Let's say I just want to do this. I'll do my Git URL here and I'll type in, you know, let's say main, I'll not keep any credentials and click on generate pipeline script. And this is the pipeline script that I can use inside from project. And that is what we have used previously as well. This is the thing that I've typed here, right? That is the same as what we had copied. I just kept it in a separate line. So in this way, I can get any declarative, you know, snippet that I want through this pipeline syntax generator. 
okay so that is what i used as well here so i went with credentials okay i have given that and i can add a binding to it like secret text okay i can give the variable that i have so in this case i can give it like let's say something like that and i'll click on generate so this is what we had previously used as well this syntax is going to be copied over and i can paste it here and in that i've typed out my commands that is the shell commands so in this way you can get all your you know pipeline syntax snippets from this and there are a lot of here so you can go through that once all right so now let's go back and let's save this let's click on apply and save now let's go back to my docker hub okay let's go to repositories and as you can see there is no particular image present here in this repository as of now there is nothing pushed so let's go back and in here now let's click on build now ideally that build should succeed and our image has to be pushed to docker hub let's click on this so if i click on file i can go to my options or like if i click on this i can actually go to status from status i can go to console output or if i click on this tick mark directly i will go to my console output that's a shortcut okay all right so now let's wait for this to complete all right so seems like our build failed and okay seems like the login was successful but our request was denied so let's try to debug what's happening here all right so the build was successful <laughs> basically the issue was that i've given my username wrong so if i go to my repository you'll see that my name is packet code official wherein see i is not present so because of that i the link that was established with you know repository was not working correctly so what i mean by that is if i go to my pipeline once again you'll see that here i've given the credentials and image name right so in the image name i've given it as packet code official ci previously it was ci but since there was an issue with the username it was not working so if i remove that ci and kept it as ca that was working so the same had to be done here so once that was done the link was established correctly and the image was pushed to the docker hub so you'll see that if i now go to repositories let's open the angular hyphen app you'll see that here also you can see that it is packet official without an i so if i open that let's refresh here okay so you can see that a new tag was created so if i open this tag this is the image which houses our project so i can now use this image and i can install that anywhere that i want in any of my servers so if i go to repositories if i click on public view as of now this repository is, is available for everyone to consume and you can see that this is the name that that they can use to actually pull this particular image onto their local system now they can pull that image and run that to create the actual container with that you know project so that is how we actually use pipeline as well as you know freestyle projects to automate your build process and as you have seen we have actually included the build and push but what you can do is that you can add a test phase as well in between and run few test cases if you want so before closing this off there is one more plugin that i want to show you so if i go to dashboard and click on manage jenkins let's go to plugins and in here available plugins let's type in blue ocean in here you can install the first one so basically blue ocean is a newer interface for jenkins so i'll just show you what that is and how it is you know a bit different from the stock jenkins ui that you have okay so now that is done let's go back to the dashboard okay when you now go to dashboard you'll see that there's an option here called open blue ocean let's open that in a new tab so now this is a completely different interface compared to the previous jenkins that we have seen so this is basically the newer interface for Jenkins and most of the companies right now are using this particular interface. This is pretty much similar to the older one, but a few of the things have been updated. So I can click on new pipeline here and I can select where I've got the code from. In this case, I'll select GitHub and I can, you know, connect to it through an access token that's going to actually deploy my application. But if I want to create a pipeline specifically, I can click on classic item creation. That's going to go back again to the older UI. So basically what's happening here is that Jenkins Blue Ocean doesn't support 
the whole Jenkins infra infrastructure that is the UI part. Only few things have been updated, new UI interface. So yeah, you can go through some of the things here. Still, it's gonna jump back to the old interface in few cases, but yeah, some of the things have been updated. Like let's say if I go to an existing pipeline, I can click on this and I can click on run and that's gonna start the Angular application once again. So I can click on this, yeah, this is gonna show the logs of what's happening here. And yeah, I can stop this if I want from here. So there are a lot of different you know UI features that you can explore with this. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you have liked video seen till now. If you did then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.